I'm with Crystal Gonzalez, the regional head of Viber based here in Manila, but she handles all of Southeast Asia. So we're very thankful that you took time out for the Digicon to join us here today, Crystal. Thank, thank you so you. much. Now, right now for all of us, um, Viber is practically ubiquitous on all our phones. It's something we need to use every day right now. Tell us how what itch that Viber tried to, to scratch uh, when you guys started out the business. So we launched in 2013 mm -hmm. and we really wanted to target the youth. So a lot of the efforts and initiatives we did were targeting millennials, particularly 16 to 25 years oh, old. Oh, we, we fall into that uh, age range, yes. I see. <laughs> but how did it actually start? Who, who thought about mm -hmm. it? Um, okay. what, what, was, what did they were doing at the time? So I was hired by the founder himself, mm -hmm. Mr. Talmon Marco, okay. around September 2013. Okay, okay. And then we, we started planning how to launch the brand and the app in the market. So before we launched, we had maybe 200,000 active users. And then we had a big marketing plan. And um, that time, all the competitors were actually ahead. I mean, they were already marketing in the Philippines maybe six, eight months ahead of us. So it was a, a scary time for us. And they obviously had maybe three times our budget. And that's obviously. right, that's so, right. Uh, we had to really find a way to differentiate ourselves and to be noticed. Like, how do we, how do we, how do we tell them about Viber and what makes us different yes, compared yes. to other Exactly, apps? so what, 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 what's, what does make you guys different? So how we positioned ourselves is we wanted to be the fun, expressive app. Ah. So we focused more on group messaging versus one-to-one -one messaging and stickers, localized stickers, which turned out to be one of the favorite two features of Filipinos, group messaging and stickers. I see, I see. So we promoted this heavily and also in terms of a brand, we created our brand equity by letting the youth experience the brand's fun. Uh, pre fun brand presence through events. I see. So that time, events, concerts, you know, clubbing, all these things were very big. So we found our, a, a way to integrate the brand in all these youthful experiences. So the idea behind it was more like with Viber, it's not just a fun, expressive messaging app, but if you're a Viber user, you get a VIP treatment or you get a freebie or a reward. So that was how we invested our money versus, let's say, investing on celebrities, on I TV see. commercials. So events, experiences, very YOLO, was, very, very yes, YOLO. It was in other very words, experience very millennial, yeah. very millennial, if you think about it. Exactly. And for markets like this, the influencer segment is really the youth, the millennials, mm -hmm. and the more A, B, C, one market. Okay, understand. I mean, at the end of the day, they're the smartphone owners as okay, well. Okay, understand. So we focused on that market, which turned out to be more cost efficient for us. And pretty much these are also your loyal uh, users because they're the ones that have consistent data connectivity. I see. They can afford the smartphones. So you, you, those are pretty much the barriers, the, the smartphone ownership and the connectivity. So data connection is still not as cost efficient as let's say other markets like Singapore, Korea, where everybody can pretty much afford it. So it was very important for us to target and hit and invest on that specific audience. So Philippines was really one of the priority markets to launch. Why, why the Philippines? Because of the size of the market? Because mm -hmm. of the, the level of uh, social media penetration? We're a tech capital mm. since back in the day, since around 2005. So we're a tech capital, we're a mobile savvy nation. Mm -hmm. So in terms of learning growth, Mm -hmm. We're actually the top, even up to now, we're part of the top 10 uh, markets I in, see. in Viber. So they they just thought that, you know, by launching Viber here, we could, it was the right time, that time. And also they were going to learn a lot of things here that they can replicate I see, so that's the way they also chose the Philippines as yes. sort of like one of, uh, the first. one of the first markets to go into. Our Southeast Asia hub is actually here, so mm -hmm. we're managing all the Southeast Asian markets and we're big in Myanmar mm -hmm. and Vietnam as well. I see. Um, for the other markets, so we also started having an office in Russia. So we have, we still have an office in Russia, Belarus, our Israel, our Israel office is still there. We also started to have an office in the US. I know, so it's, yeah. it's growing. So it's growing. When he brought you in, was the company already uh, was still Big. bootstrapping or was it already a company that had uh, venture capitalists coming into the business? 
Uh, Viber started initially through through the founder, and actually their investments were mostly from family and friends. They also had another startup before. Okay. Before they launched Viber, these are the same group of uh, founders. Okay. So that's how Viber started, and then around 2014, we were bought out by a Japanese e-commerce called okay. Rakuten. Okay. So Rakuten is like the Amazon of Japan. Now we're pretty much ran the same way. We're still um, quite like a fun startup type of operation. So we were still able to maintain the Viber startup culture. But with the bigger ATM, with, with the bigger with a ATM <laughs> investor, <laughs> okay. I guess we have 25 million unique registered users wow. in the Philippines alone. Okay. So the in terms of, I guess, competition, so in terms of market share, we have like 70% penetration um, in terms of installations. Um, in terms of messaging apps, so we're, we're number one next to, if you count Facebook Messenger, which pretty much automated the social media users mm -hmm. to Messenger users. Mm -hmm. um, so we're pretty much the top in terms of messaging app. We're, that's what we're really more known for than a social mess, social networking app. I see. What's next for you guys? Uh, right. Where are you taking? Uh, yeah. Where are you taking Viber next? So we launched a public chat feature, which pretty much um, allows publishers, brands, groups, celebrities to post real time, sort of like feeds mm -hmm. on on Viber. So it's mm -hmm. called public chat. Um, you can chat as a group and it's pretty much it works like a group chat but people can follow you I see. so that's one of the features we have but then we launched that a couple of years back so before the year end we're updating that and we're enabling people or brands mm -hmm. to be able to communicate to other Viber users I so see I we're see. soon um, so direct to direct yes. to, to direct to consumer soon the mm -hmm. idea is uh, people or the Viber users can communicate with brands or celebrities directly through Viber as through, well through Viber now the question Question right now I have for Viber, which I've always asked myself. It's a, it's such a fantastic uh, group messaging function. Mm -hmm. Is how is Viber actually making money? What's the business model for you guys to generate mm -hmm. income? So we make money. Our business model is through the Viber Out. Viber Out is like a calling service where you can um, you pay a certain fee and um, you can call any mobile or landline. Okay. Through Viber Out, so you put. Um, it's, it's, it works through credit. So you have Viber Out Credits that right now works through either your telecom direct through mm -hmm. your postpaid network okay. or through credit card. That's one. And the other one is through stickers. Okay. And there's two components to the stickers. So one is the paid sticker pack. So not all the stickers that you use are free. Some oh. you have to pay for I it for like a okay. dollar or two. But okay. obviously most Filipinos enjoy the, the, the free, free stickers. The free sticker, yes, of course. Uh -oh. But some actually are fond also of the paid sticker pack, which are a bit more premium stickers. And also we have, now we opened our... Um, doors to businesses and brands okay so now you can also have branded sponsored stickers on Viber I see so right now can you tell me if Viber is actually making money as a business actually for Southeast Asia we're actually the top uh, revenue making region in ah, the see. whole Viber so uh, that's with the stickers for the, the stickers the sponsored stickers so that has worked really well for our brands and the partners and also Viber out so obviously since we, ha we have high over 12 million OFWs mm -hmm. Abroad, I see. It I benefits see. them to have the, the 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 families here and vice versa. So they use Viber Out service because not everybody ha can afford a smartphone. So the idea of Viber Out is that you can you can call your family or relatives mm -hmm. abroad on at a more affordable rate, whether they have a smartphone or not. So you can call them in the office, at home, or oh, by you know, by, uh, by a la on the laptop app. as long as they've got a Viber yeah. application over there. You just there. need a connection and ah. a Viber account. I see, I see. Now, right now here in Digicon, it, this is all about the power of X or amplifying or multiplying mm -hmm. your ability to communicate, to interact via social media. What benefit has it been for Viber to participate uh, in this conference? What does, it, what does it give you in terms of digital convergence? I think definitely because Viber, we, we've always been into collaboration. So a lot of our great work and partnerships, whether it's a sticker or a public chat account, mm -hmm. has been through collaboration with partners. So definitely this is the biggest or I guess the best avenue to promote, you know, what's new. Um, pretty much informing everybody that you know you can talk to us, you can collaborate with us, and that's actually the beginning of where great partnerships I and see. great like marketing efforts come from. So hopefully, definitely, we expect a lot of leads on partnerships, and hopefully, from this event, we generate more like great marketing efforts. So, Mr. thank you so much thank for your time. For thank, you so thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now.
Let's find out what will be the next big startup after the break.